with its recent reboot, audiences are once again experiencing that middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, known as the Twilight Zone. You're traveling through another dimension. The Twilight Zone, which originally ran from 1959 to 1964, seemed to cut to the heart of our hopes, fears, and prejudices better than almost any other TV show. They looked just like humans, and it wasn't until the ship landed that... Tommy, please, son. Honey, don't talk like that. But what's the true story behind this beloved science fiction series? The Twilight Zone sprang from the mind of writer Rod Serling, who also served as the show's distinctive host. A strange intersection in a shadow land called the Twilight Zone. And many of the show's terrors came from Serling's own life, including what he experienced during World War II. Rod Serling volunteered for the military a day after high school graduation in January of 1943, and he had just turned 18 in December of 42, so he was barely 18 years old. He was five foot four inches tall and weighed 118 pounds. He was a paratrooper in the Philippines, and he saw some pretty heavy combat uh, in Leyte and Luzon. So he's one of these paratroopers going in ahead of the expeditionary forces, island to island. And he sees so many of his friends killed. He sees so much. What he saw, you can only, you, you can't imagine what he saw. It, it was so awful. But he comes back from World War II damaged. There's no other way to say it. He's physically damaged because he has taken shrapnel in his knee, and that's going to give him trouble for the rest of his life. Uh, he's physically wounded, and he's emotionally scarred because of what he's gone through. And those experiences shaped him for the rest of his life. They shaped him as a man and, and as a writer. Serling returned from the war and enrolled in Antioch College in Ohio. He started to write. One of the first things he ever wrote and handed into his creative writing professor was a, a short story or maybe the beginning of a novel uh, that was loosely autobiographical about his war experiences. It was called First Squad, First Platoon. And it dealt with the death of a member of the 511th Infantry Parachute Infantry Regiment, which is, was his regiment. And uh, each chapter of it dealt with the, the death of a different member of the regiment. The story was rooted in a real-life tragedy of war, one very close to Serling. He gave each of these characters an ironic death. Uh, the famous one that a lot of people have heard of is uh, a good friend of Serling's, Melvin Levy. Um, when they were in the mountains of Lady, and they were literally starving. I mean, they had gone 10 days without food and it was raining continuously and the planes were trying to kept trying to find them to drop supplies, to drop food and ammo and everything else. And finally the planes got through and Melvin Levy was out there waiting for the planes and a crate fell out, you know, was dropped from the plane and landed on Melvin Levy and killed him instantly. And you know, you, know, you don't get any more ironic than that, a starving soldier being killed by a crate of food. And that sense of irony is what he carried right into the Twilight Zone with the twist endings and what have you. So that I, it's hard not to trace it back to those experiences. Despite those troubling experiences and his often terrifying show, Serling himself was by many accounts a fun-loving and fun person to be around. I mean, I guess the common misperception just from seeing him on the screen in the Twilight Zone is that Rod Serling was this very foreboding and dark and serious uh, guy. And uh, from every indication that I have from speaking to Ann Serling and Jody Serling and, uh, you know, people who knew Rod Serling, he was nothing like that. I think people would be uh, shocked that my dad was nothing like that black and white image. He was uh, brilliantly funny, a practical joker, anything for a laugh, uh, just fun. And even in my early teens, you know, when you wouldn't necessarily want to hang around with your dad, or your mom's. I, I loved being with him. He was, and my friends adored him. If they had any apprehension at first before meeting him, thinking he would be that black and white image that quickly uh, dissolved. He was literally the guy who would put the lamp lampshade on his head at the party. Though lighthearted, Sterling was no lightweight. He cared deeply about what was right. One of the things that endears Rod Serling to, to people, you know, through the generations is this, this feeling, this sense you get that he really was on the side of the little guy. Serling made sure the Twilight Zone served justice upon those who deserved it. I actually think that he was just born with some kind of innate sense of justice, uh, of, of social justice. And he, when he saw injustice, he was going to speak about it. And as a writer, he felt it was his job to do that. 
He felt it was the job of the writer to make comments on his on the current issues of his time. How we treat older people, how we treat children, ignorance, prejudice, war. All of these are themes which recur in Rod's work time and time again. Prejudice just enraged him. And he, as he said, it's a theme in almost everything that he wrote. Those themes, and the way they were artfully inscribed in tales of the supernatural, have given The Twilight Zone a staying power that few other TV shows can claim. Any state, any entity, any ideology that fails to recognize the worth, the dignity, the rights of man, that state is obsolete. Rod certainly worried about uh, whether people would ever know a thing he wrote 100 years after his death. Yeah, we're not now 50 years removed from his death, and we still know who he is, and we still know this, who the, what the stories are. That's still going to be true 100 years from now, and it's still going to be true when we're colonizing Mars and reaching out to Alpha Centauri. It's still going to be true. Something my dad said was he felt that it was a writer's job to menace the public's conscience. And so all of these themes that he, you know, or, or many of the themes that he wrote about were themes that he felt we need to be very conscious of and thinking about this all the time. This is InsideEdition.com.